All right, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Rakak, Wadash, double honors to the apostles, the bishops, and elders, elders of Great Millstone, who rule well and taught me this truth, and peace and salutations to the Bayaf Dawada, that's the the house of David, the hopeful elect that's pushing this word throughout the four corners of broad with truth and sincerity. And uh, shalom to the Akim and Wa'athwats, peace and blessings to brothers and sisters that may be tuning in, studying, and learning. Under the vibration of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, this is the brother Taz of War, Bon Aparim from the GMS Boston Camp, back with a quick lesson through the Spirit, and I pray everything is edifying. And as you can see on the screen, amen, we're in the time of war, we're in the time of war, rumors of wars and rumors of wars, wars and commotions. This was a major indicator or a major sign that Yahweh Shai left his disciples as a, uh, as a clue, you know, to to for 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 the disciples to measure the time diligently and to ultimately know that our Lord and Savior is soon about to make His second coming, you know, in these latter days and these last times, and we know prior to World War Three uh, actually taking place, you know, with uh, missiles shot from one end to the earth to ultimately destroy Babylon the Great, A.K.A. America, Esau, Edom's rulership in their heaven, uh, the so-called white man's uh, nationality. Before Babylon must be destroyed, there's other prophecies that have to uh, come to pass. You know, Jacob's trouble, the MOTB, which is the um, you know, the RFID microchip that's spoken about in Revelations, the 13th chapter. You know that Karagma has to be made mandatory, and then ultimately these uh these uh nations and armies going to war, you know, and and shooting their missiles at each other. And we're just on the brinks of it. We know we've been prophesying, uh, uh, starting from the apostles and bishops and elders and brothers on down from Great Millstone that uh, World War Three is inevitable, and we've been prophesying that this war is going to be a war of uh, of missiles, of, of fire, you know, and, and burning of fuel of fire, as the scripture says. I believe that's Isaiah nine, in the ninth chapter. So hey, we're in the brinks of it, man. The, this um, World War Three is at hand. And these, again, these are these latter days. And we, as a job of a prophet, is to give you warning, man. But we're in the time of commotion, a, a time of not peace and not uh, love and safety. We're in time of, of war uh, and hatred. So real quick, I want to start out with Ecclesiastes, the third cha uh, chapter. Uh, Ecclesiastes 3, verse 1. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the under the heaven. A uh, time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak. And here's the point: a time to love and a time to hate. Uh, a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. And right now, the tension is brewing for a time of war. We're in the time of hate, uh, iniquity abounding, the love of many waxing worse and worse, or waxing cold. We're in the time of wars and rumors of wars. And again, these are indicators. These are the signs uh, to know that this we're in the season of war, a season of death, a season of 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 of, um, uh, of a great misery and destruction, man. And we're here to give you warning, you know, as a job of a prophet. Again, we're supposed to give you warning and blow the trumpet to give, uh, so the house of Israel could seek Yahweh Bashem Yahushai and repent, man. You know, so how we uh, measure the time diligently, we do it through. Uh, these news events, these articles, and we filter them through the prophecies of the scriptures. And uh, I got here from endtimeheadlines.org. The heading reads, Iran vows to strike Israel with weapon never used before. And as you can see on the image, it's ICBM missiles, man. They're ready to shoot missiles, man. Nuclear, uh, uh, nuclear missiles, man. And we've been prophesying, man. Starting from the apostles on down, man. From the head up. That this war is going to be a war uh, uh, that's going to become nuclear and it's going to cause great death. And ultimately, it's going to be 
a, a, a world a world war. So a lot of nations and militaries are going to join. And they're all ultimately going to have one common enemy because the will of Yahweh Hashem Shai is to have all these uh, uh, heathens or Gentiles prepare for war to ultimately go and take out uh, Babylon the Great, a.k.a. America, to annihilate it off the face of the earth. And we know that Israel, uh, U.S., is, uh, is Israel's uh, ally. So this is going to... Uh, to bring Babylon to the to the forefront, ultimately for war. But again, let, let's get into this uh, article. Iran vows to strike Israel with weapon never used before. Israel told Iran today they won't get off scot-free for their attacks as the world waits with bated breath for their response amid fears of, un of an uncontrollable war across the Middle East. But Iranian security chief uh, Ebola... Uh, Abolifaz uh, Amuli last night warned that if Israel does respond, then Tehran is prepared to use a weapon that we have never used. It is unclear what weapon Amuli was referring to, but he warned Israel to act wisely as it considers his next steps. They say, Amen. They they're not just threatening it, man. They they're gonna they're they're they are they are poking out their chest. They mean it, man. They, you know they they're not just throwing out threats, man. They're gonna fulfill what they say, man. Ultimately, again, this is the will of Yahweh Hashem Shai because we're in the time of war, man. A chief IDF spokesperson responded to the threats, vowing that Iran will face retaliation. The IDF spokesperson, Rear Admiral Daniel. Hagari said, we cannot stand still from this kind of aggression. Iran will not get off scot-free with this aggression. We will respond in our time, in our place, in the way that we choose. Colonel Hamish de Breton Gordon, a weapons and defense expert, said that Iran could be hinting at unleashing nuclear, biological, and chemical warfare. See, so, it, it, hey, man. War is in the air. And again, this is what we've been prophesying. This is in the scriptures. Let me get it real quick. Uh, Revelations 11 verse 14. And it reads, The second woe is past, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. Again, World War One and World War Two pass. Behold, look, the third woe, which is woe is death and destruction, but it's referring to this third world war, is cometh quickly, man. You know, and then we're we're in the brinks of it. You know, we're in the brinks of all of uncontrollable wars, as that um, article states. I have another one on Revelations nine and twelve. One woe is past, and behold, there comes two woes more hereafter. So it's been prophesied that there's going to be three world wars, man, and we're in the brinks of that third world coming quickly, man. And this war is going to be shot. But again, by by thermonuclear missiles. It was at Isaiah 9 and 5. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood. But this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. So this battle, this upcoming war, you know, World War Three is going to be shot and fought with burning and fuel of fire. It's ultimately going to be shot by the arrows that the prophets seen and prophesied about. Them arrows is referring to... These missiles, man, as you can see in this uh, in this image, these are the arrows that the prophets Joel, uh, John the Revelator, Malachi, uh, Ezra, Isaiah, Jeremiah, so on and so forth. Many prophets seen these visions of arrows being shot from one end to the earth. Ultimately, it's going to be lead to. Uh, Missiles being shot at America, but we hey we're in the brinks of it again. Yahweh Shai left these signs and wonders, these clues for us to measure, man. Uh, Matthew twenty four and three, <clears throat> and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, "Tell us when when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world." And Yahweh Shai answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. 
For many shall come in my name, saying, I am the anointed, and shall deceive many. And here's the point in verse 6. And ye shall and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. See, so this is indicators, man, that these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Verse 7, for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in, di in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. And we in the brink, we, we in the beginning of sorrows, man. Again, these clues, these signs and wonders, the season that I read in uh, Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, we're in the time of war and of hate, you know, we're not in a time of love and peace, man. Again, these are indicators. We shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Nation is getting ready to, to rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. We're in the brinks of, of, of nuclear war, man. So let's get back into this article. You know, it said, behold, the third world coming quickly. And this is how we measure the time diligently. Again, another indicator, you know, another um, article. Again, as a watchman, we see these things. We have to we have to blow the trumpet and warn the house of Israel that the sword is coming, man. Um, I left off yet yeah, with the the they said that Iran could be hinting at unleashing nuclear, biological, and chemical warfare. Yet the retired army officer told the son it is unlikely that Iran has some new wonderful weapon that nobody knows about that could really have an impact against Israel or the West. And see, ultimately the West, they're referring to America, Babylon the Great, according to the scriptures, man. What I take from this is further bluster from Iran. They are obviously desperately concerned that the Israelis are going to hit them back hard. On Saturday night, Iran attacked Israel with a wave of at least 330 ballistic and cruise missiles and drones. The first ever direct attack, uh, attack by Tehran on its enemy. Iran had promised retaliation for the deadly strike. On its consolidated building in Damascus earlier this month, but its barrage failed to get through Israel's defenses. Israel's Iron Dome defense system and its allied warplanes, including the UK's RAF Typhoon, shot down 99% of the projectiles. See, ultimately, it was the will of Yahweh Bashim al Shah. We know uh, before all this destruction take place, the elect of Israel have to be sealed. The 144,000 uh, out of 12,000 out of each tribe from the 12 tribes of Israel and the one third. The elect got to be sealed before uh, the Lord brings the ultimate destruction and judgment on the earth, man. And mainly to uh, Babylon the Great. You know, once the elect are sealed, then the end will come. So real quick, let me, uh, let me get to that. Matthew 20. Matthew 24 and 14, and this gospel of the kingdom shall, <clears throat> shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. So this gospel, we're giving you this warning, and we're telling you to get right and repent. And again, it's not for all nations. This is for the elect of Israel, the remnant of Israel. And once they hear and, and, and they repent and they're sealed, then Yahweh is going to give the decree to Yahweh Shai and to the angels to hurt the earth, as it says in Revelation 7 and 1. <clears throat> and after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor of the sea, nor on any nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living power. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we seal the servants of our power in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed a hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. So once the hundred and forty four thousand are sealed, you know, the elect, then the Lord is going to send that decree to the four angels to hurt the earth and the sea, man. But until they're, but, but that's after they're sealed. So this is how we know that um, the elect got to be sealed. 
But ultimately, we know through prophecy that the MOTB, the Karagma, the CHIP, has to be made mandatory, you know, and, and Jacob's trouble, you know, so, th but we're just one step closer. We're here giving you that warning. Again, uh, in, in Matthew 24, it says all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. And you know, we've been having wars and rumors of wars, you know, commotions, um, nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, uh, pestilence and famines and, and earthquakes in diverse places, man. These are signs. And, and we're telling you, you so-called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans, it's time to repent because the Lord ain't playing, man. The doors of mercy, of great, that grace period is still open unto you. The doors are still open. Repent, man. That's most important. Fear Yahweh Bashim Nawashah. You know, seek him now before the evil days draw nigh, before it's too late. You know, but we've been warning you that the Lord's about to visit the earth which he made. Um, second Ezra 8 and 61. And it reads, And therefore is my judgment now in hand. These things I have not shown unto all men, but unto thee and a few like thee. Then answered I and said, Behold, O Lord, and now hast thou showed me the multitude of the wonders which thou wilt begin to do in the last times, but at what time thou hast not showed me. Second Ezra 9 and 1. He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself, and when thou seest the parts, seest parts of the signs past which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. And again, we're measuring the time diligently. The Lord is leaving his servants, the prophets, man, to be the watchmen, to, to warn you that judgment is coming, the sword is coming, and it behooves you to take heed and get right and repent, man. You know, because the, the highest, Yahweh, is about to send his only begotten son to, to fulfill his will and visit this world. And the Lord said he's going to visit this world. Let me get it. Same uh, same chap, same book. Second like Ezra's 15 and uh, I'll get straight to the point. Second Ezra 15 and 5. Behold, said the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death and destruction for wickedness have exceedingly polluted the whole earth and their hurtful works are fulfilled see so this is part also of the beginning of sorrows man the lord said the plagues are coming to the world the sword famine death and destruction now let me get to the next chapter second ezra 16 and 17 woe is me woe is me who would deliver me in those days the beginning of sorrows and great mornings the beginning of famines and great death uh, the beginning of wars, and the power shall stand in fear. The beginning of evil, and what shall I do when these evils shall come? A hey, evil is bad times. And we're telling you that it's, we're not in a time, of, again, uh, again, of love and peace and happiness, of good times. We're in the time of war, a time of hate, a time of evil, man. You know, the Lord's about to bring judgment upon the earth, man. So it behooves you to get right and repent. War is coming, you know, and we're just one step closer to that uh, inevitable war that's been prophesied in the scriptures. And I brought it out, you know, Revelations 11 and 14 and Revelations, the ninth chapter, man. Behold, the second woe, uh, the, the, the third, the second woe is past. Behold, the third woe cometh quickly, you know, there be one woe that passed and there's two more woes co coming hereafter. I'm quoting those scriptures that was in Revelations. See, so, hey, man, we're in the brinks of it. So it behooves you to get right, repent before it's too late, you know. I'll close it out with this. Was it uh, Isaiah? Just bear with me. Yeah, uh, Isaiah 55, verse 6. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. See, so it's, it behooves you to seek after Yahweh Bashim Awashah and repent, you know, while he may be found. He, he st the, the Lord still has it that his servants are on the highways and byways, week in and week out, prophesying, uploading lessons day in and day out on social media, YouTube mainly. You know, so the Lord is making his words accessible. But there's going to be a time, as it's been predicted in the scriptures, 
that there's going to be a famine of word. And you ain't going to be able to, you're going to walk to and fro and you ain't going to be able to hear it or find it. So this is a valuable take take heed in the time of your leisure and while everything is 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 is, is brewing up. We're still in the beginning of sorrows. But there's going to be a time when them doors are closed, that door, that grace period, the mercy, and people are going to be shocked or in fear for when the evils come. And they didn't take heed. So that's why it's it behooves you to seek the Lord while he may be found, man. Now I'll close out with this. Ecclesiastic is 5 and 7. And it reads, uh, Make no tarrying to turn to the Lord and put not off from day to day. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth. And in thy security thou shalt be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance. And hey, that's plain and simple, man. Do not delay uh, getting right with Yahweh Hashem Yahushua. Do not tarry to turn to the Lord. Do not put off from day to day. Don't be lackadaisical, man. Once you hear this, it should raise your eyebrows and uh, raise your antennas to seek Yahweh Hashem Yahushua. You should be making this uh, a duty as uh, something that's very important for for your life, man. You know, before the evil days draw draw nigh, man. Because suddenly will the wrath come from the Lord, man. And you will be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance if you didn't get right, man. So I hope everything was edifying. Again, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashim Yahushah, Bashim Kakwadash. Again, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, who rule well and taught me this truth and peace and citations to the Bayaf Dawadah, the house of David, the elect. Until next time, I want to say Shalom.